doubled. They're not going to get it off. Cisco's going to run to the far side, and he's tackled at the eight-yard line, and the Rams are still alive. Fires down the middle, incomplete at the two-yard line. San Diego State will get the ball back. One, two, three. Run, run, run. Welcome to the Sonny Lubick Show with your host, Todd Romero. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. Coach, the Mountain West Conference proving to be a tough one. You fall to 0-2 Saturday as you fall to San Diego State, a team that was better than their record when they came in in conditions that if you didn't take advantage of your opportunities, I think it bit you later on in the game. Well, you're, you're right there, Todd. It's, it was a game where uh, the field conditions were going to play a, a huge part, especially through the first two and a half quarters. And it was uh, we talked to our football team about getting good field position, hopefully making something happen, getting an opportunity. And we had a couple chances there, especially early in the game. I believe the first punt of the game, they snapped it over the, the center, their punter's head because it was hard to hold on to the ball. It was slick. And he still, the uh, punter did a great job, walked back there cautiously, punted the ball for about 46 yards. And I don't believe we came up with any points there. But there was a couple opportunities like that that uh, both teams had to fight to get. And then we gave up a couple points or a couple up, didn't take advantage of an opportunity, gave up two opportunities and we're down 10 to 3 at halftime. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first half highlights. The Rams and the Aztecs, both teams playing to get their first win in Mountain West Conference play. And as Coach told you, the conditions at Hughes Stadium, not that good. I mean, really, the field got torn up after that soft snow came down. It was very wet. It made for some tough sledding. And San Diego State usually does not play well in this kind of weather. Uh, but they came out and they played decently. The Rams started off, and it was tough to throw the ball. Newton here gets one off. Wasn't exactly a spiral, but Dallas Davis hauls it in here. Well, that was the key again is that the quarterback just couldn't grip the ball. It was, it was no matter how dry you tried to keep him, it was it was tough footing as you can see here. Kevin can't get a can't hang on to the football and there's people going down. So we're sliding all over the field. But it's kind of fun and both teams uh, got after it and, and played extremely hard. Defense came up big early. Ula Tuatele, the leader in that linebacking core now with Rick Kroll out, makes the stop on third and two. Well, I think the defense has had the advantages here, and both defenses played very well in conditions. There's the play I was talking about earlier. This is it, amazing. This, this is, he goes back. He could hardly keep his balance. We got two people there, and he kicks it right between two of the, I think it was both the Gallimore boys. Both came down there. He had a chance to pick it up, and we end up with the ball instead of for two points and maybe a chance for another drive. We end up with nothing there. And here's Kevin making a good run. There's some good block, and it's, it's just a matter of who can keep their feet and who can hang on to the football. Right now we're playing for survival, both teams. That run right there by McDougal put him eighth place all time on the CSU rushing list. Here's a double reverse to Dallas Davis. Gets a good gain here for 12 yards, but on the play, Pete Rebstock hurt. It would cost you later in the game because he's the holder for your field goal unit. Exactly. And Pete got, I uh, guess, hit by a linebacker there and blindsided, really. But that was a good call by the offense because you get the defense working one way and then you come back the other way. And I think, did we make this field goal? Yeah. I guess we did. And so we're up with three points here, three to zero. And ne neither team had probably had more than two or three first downs here in the first quarter. Matt Newton goes back, and this is one of the best plays of the day. Dallas does a great job adjusting to this ball. A bit underthrown, but in those conditions, nicely thrown ball. Dallas gets a 44-yard gain. And this is what you talked about, taking advantage. Pete Rebstock's not in there. Dion bubbled that a little bit, and you didn't come up with any points. Well, that's it. Now that turns out to be crucial later on in the ball game. But even Dallas has great catch there. The ball is throwing up there. Matt gets him the football, but Dallas breaks away almost for a, a chance here. But then they come back, and right toward the latter part of the game with a minute to go, uh, they drive the ball about 50 yards down the field, uh, score, and then we come up with the ensuing center quarterback exchange. And this really hurts us because instead of, you know, it's a, a four-point game, now they kick about a 35, 40-yard field goal. And it's 10 to 3 when we have actually played great defense, other than probably two plays in the first uh, half. And here we are, we're down 10 to 3. You know, a lot of this game, coach, you've seen things happen in games where you really can't explain it. You look at that game, 
the punt, somehow the punter gets it off between the two defenders. Then you look at the, the field goal where you lose your snapper, you lose three points there. Then you lose three points at the end of the half with five seconds left, the center quarterback exchange. I mean, things happen like that when you don't have them going your way. Well, yeah, and you got to be a little bit tougher and make it probably more coaching than anything else. You know, you can't, I don't know how, what you do about the center quarterback exchange, only that in this weather, you have to be just, you can't take anything casually. It has to be so important because uh, each team's going to have a couple of those during the course of the game. Ours came at a bad, at a bad point there, and so uh, it's a matter of being tougher. It's a matter of maybe making the right call in certain situations, and then we have to make a play. I hate to keep saying that because all coaches talk about making plays and doing this and doing that. Both teams played very hard under the conditions. It's a 10-3 to ball game. We know that it's going to be tough to get a lot of points in the second half because they're a good defense and the conditions aren't going to allow that. All right, it was 10-3 at halftime. San Diego State with the lead. When we come back, we'll take a look at second half highlights of the Rams lost to San Diego State. The Sonny Lubick Show is brought to you by Sutherland's, home improvement centers of Fort Collins. Lewis dropped at the San Diego State 48, no gain. Here's Newton, turns, hands it off to McDougal. Kevin got in. Touchdown, Colorado State. The offensive play of the game, Kevin McDougal scoring from four yards out and I guess when you score 10 points, you got to search for those offensive plays of the game. But that was a tough one because yards were getting uh, very hard to come by when you get down near the goal line against San Diego State, who has a very good defense. Right. Well, we knew going in, as I said earlier, that San Diego State was going to be as good a defensive team as most teams in the, in the conference. And then you couple that with the field conditions. Our defense played very well. I think we held them to 202 yards. They held us to 270 yards. And so there aren't going to be a lot of offensive plays, and you, you chose a good one. That's right. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at second-half highlights of the Rams and Aztecs. And for a moment there, the second half uh, got in a little better conditions. The sun peaked out, but uh, not for too long. I'll tell you, one of the players had a tremendous day, Coach, was Dallas Davis. Nine catches, career high, 125 yards, and really did the job. And look at these two guys out there, huh? Well, <laughs> we should have had them suiting up and running down on kickoffs for us or something, <laughs> like, like the 12th man, but they, they look good. But... Yeah, I think the conditions did come up, up a little bit better, but that Dallas has had a great season for us. Here, that, that's a tough catch he makes there, and a, every time you catch one in a game like this is so darn crucial to keeping a drive alive. He made plays all over the field there. He's been interfered with, and we get the ball down there. He had, had his man beat, and there's no way Matt could have got that one in there, but uh, we'll take the interference call and give us a chance to get in scoring position. And here's the offensive play of the game. Kevin McDougal bolting in from four yards out. Right now the team's tied at 10 apiece. You're back in the football game. Things are looking good. Right. Well, it's 10-0, and then we had a couple opportunities here. I think we knock a ball loose down here, rolled around, but instead of us falling on it, they end up with the football. Uh, we had our hands on an interception, but we really came out the third quarter and played very consistent and aggressive defense didn't give him a chance to get anything going until right here I believe is just the fumble yeah, here Adam There's Wade with a great open field tackle great open field tackle and the ball is rolling back on about this 18 yard line but as luck would have that's the second opportunity that we had in the ball game that we couldn't convert here and then this is a play that they kind of quarterback slips here we have real good coverage on the ball just bad timing by our, our cornerback, John Howes, running over there as a safety man trying to get in on the play. But that was what it was going to take to win the football game. Somebody had to get a 30-yard scoring strike, and then we end up turning the ball over here, and they have a chance to put the game away, but our defense does another outstanding job. Yeah, no, nice place here by Justin Gallimore. I mean, looks like he's off balance a little bit, makes the play on the ball, knocks it down. And I think the defense, by doing that, gave San Diego State a few questions. The high snap here, and your defense was able to keep them off the board, which at this point in time kept you in the game. It's a seven-point game. There still is time. And Matt Newton does his best to get the Rams uh, in position. It's fourth and two here. you got to go for it on your end. McDougal just gets the first down here as he fought for it and kept fighting to keep the drive alive. A time ticking down. You're under two minutes here. And then a nice play by Matt Noon, I think one of the best of the day. Picks up a block there and a great job of stopping and lets this one go up top. 
And Dallas Davis again comes back to the football and makes a tough catch. Dallas makes a great catch there. Kevin did some hard running to get that first down, but that was critical play. And Dallas does come back, make the play, and it hangs on to the football. And there's 116 left, and we're 34 yards away from. Hard and fast. One, two, three. Welcome to the Sonny Lubick Show with your host, Todd Romero. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the show. I'm very happy head coach of the CSU Rams sitting next to me. Uh, second win in a row, second big win, coach, and really turn around the season in less than a week. Well, it really, really was a great victory for our football team. And, you know, coming off the Wyoming victory and then coming back in a fast note and playing a Thursday ball game, I just could not be more proud of our football team and our coaches, the way they responded against a real first-class football team. You know, you and I talk a lot, and you said it on the show before, and sometimes people think, ah, it's just coach speak. But you say, hey, if we're not prepared to play and we don't play with emotion every week, we're not going to win. We can beat any team in this conference, and we can lose to any team. You take a look at the San Diego State loss, the Fresno loss, then you turn it around, you're emotionally high, and you come up and get victories against two very good te teams in the conference. Well, that's exactly the way it is, is that uh, – I think football throughout the country, with the exception of maybe five or six teams in the top five, that they can go out and play and maybe have a lackluster performance, still come away with a victory. However, where we are and, and most of the other teams in the country, uh, everybody is so even. Every, everybody has something good about their football program that one has to play almost air-free. You've got to play with everything you have to, for a chance for a victory. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. And I think different from some of the other games, you guys came out and played well on both sides of the football from the start. And I think it's a game, you know, a, a Thursday night game, another chance for you to be on national TV. And I know you don't like night games that much, but two national TV games and two wins in a week doesn't hurt. Well, that's, that's great. I and mean, it's great exposure for the entire university, especially for our football program. I think anybody who saw Colorado State there, uh, it, it's great. You watch our players getting ready to play coming on the field there. Boy, this guy's playing tough. Ula Tuatele, he's really taken it upon himself to lead that defensive linebacking unit. Ula Tuatele in the last three or four weeks is, is the best linebacker in our conference by far. There's no question about that. Here's Kevin McDougall finally getting that little crease in there. And all his runs were tough, hard runs. This was probably his longest one, but he, he played a, a whale of a game. Another senior stepping up, coming up big for us. McDougall gets in for the touchdown, make it a 7-0 Colorado State. Kevin McDougall now fifth on the Rams' all-time rushing list, and that's a heck of an accomplishment, especially since he's been so banged up. Well, that's a great honor and a, and a privilege, and he certainly deserves it. But Kevin, he played, he got some real tough yards on us, and here they go with a, be, be one of our corners down the sideline. John Howell comes across and makes a big play, and I think saved us a touchdown, and we, we you know, made them, force them a field goal. A lot of difference between a three-point and seven points at that point. Yeah, well, that was a 51-yard game, but the defense didn't give up on it. You do force the field goal at 7-3 at the end of the first. Second quarter, Justin Gallimore and Jamie Bennett combining on this sack. And Jamie Bennett, another one of those unsung heroes, who may not look like a dominant defensive line, but he continues to get it done. He plays hard. And Justin Gallimore, the first two times they tried to run that same play, he stuffed it for four-yard losses. And here's, here's the man uh, of the hour. That's right. Dallas here, just uh, as I said er earlier, or Thursday, thank God for Dallas making a couple great moves and just no way the punter is going to be with, <laughs> with all that room, with 50 yards of room there, just hard for one man and especially the poor old punter, he was left on an island out there and Dallas has uh, just done a tremendous job along with our entire special team. You guys thought you were close to breaking some this year, you finally got one done. Right, and there, there we come back again, there Newton takes one right in the chops there as he delivers the ball and here's the interference call because Frank Rice was trying to get back to the football. Of course, the defender did the smart thing, not allowing that to happen. A nice little play out here again where we get great blocking by uh, Blaine Sapi. Again, this play has been effective for us for years, and Frank Rice takes it in there, and this puts us up 21-3, to and everything is going Colorado State's way. Yeah, it's looking time. pretty good right now. That same, same uh, play you scored on CU with at the beginning exactly. of the season, but your defense keeps it up here. How about this kid? What a heart, huh? Well, Clark Hagan's coming back, doesn't practice all week long. We had good coverage on this quarterback, how to hold the ball. Clark comes back, and of course, every time he gets a sack, he breaks the record. I think here's CW hitting a, about a, what, 42-yard field goal here. So 
we were feeling good about ourselves as coaches and players probably thinking that we knew what we were doing at this point. And we go off at halftime with a great lead and everything going well, but we knew that Utah wasn't going to lie down. You know, you take a look at that. You go in with a 24-3 lead. A lot of people are saying, hey, this one's over. And I said, eh, not, not, not yet. Last week they scored. They blew out San Diego State, but the score was closer than uh, it, it ended up being. I mean, there was two touchdowns in the last three minutes. Utah can put the points up. That's right, and they feed off the turnovers, and that's what they did against uh, San Diego State. I think they had three turnovers and two of them in the last four minutes of the game, which resulted in both times in touchdowns. And that's what we preached our team about, that they, we just cannot afford the turnover. We did a great job offensively, not turning the ball over, but in special teams, we did give up that blocked field goal. They made a great play on it. Bang, they're right back in the football game. All right, it's 24-3 at halftime. When we come back, second half highlights of the thrilling victory over Utah. The Sonny Lubick Show is brought to you by Sutherland's, home improvement centers of Fort Collins. The ball off to Anderson. He breaks a tackle and is hammered. For a loss on the play by Justin Gallimore. What a nice effort that was. Here's the snap to Newton. Fakes. Wants to throw. Throws it out there to Rice. Gets a block. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. Colorado State scores from 26 yards out. There's that screen, and we mentioned they had Blaine Sapaia out there as a left end. He jumps out and takes the corner completely out of the play, and Rice has no one home that he even has to beat. It's a simple sprint to the end zone. The offensive play of the game, Matt Newton to Frank Rice, the great outstanding block by Blaine Sapaia, and a touchdown for the Rams in a 21-3 lead. It was 24-3 at half, and as we just said, you knew it wasn't over. This is a 6-1 and one football team that came in that has a lot of talent. Despite the fact that Arsenal, we haven't talked too much about that. Their starting quarterback uh, missed most of the game. Right. He had the, I guess he had a fever. Our strep throat was in the hospital for a day or two, which we didn't realize. But they have two pretty quality quarterbacks. They've been alternating them. And uh, Arsenal may be more the running type quarterback. Uh, the other guy in there can, can zip the football, pure passer. But uh, I think... That, that probably helped us, but uh, I was proud of our football team. That first half, we, we played about as well as we did at any time this season. Let's take a look at second half highlights. This was a wild one. If you turn the television off, you miss some great highlights. Uh, great from the Utah aspect, but the Rams did pull it out. I think when Utah, I think they did something they had to do when they came out here in the second half. Oh, nice mask, huh, Coach? That's oh, scary there. Scary, that, right? that is frightening. They come out, and they, they drive it down the field. They needed to get a score on their first possession. They do that. They get a great pass here. Pro shot complete to Boo Bendinger for 16 yards. And there's some good blocking on their part, but we still corral the football. And our objective, of course, like it is always, not to give up a big play. But their, their running backs are big, strong young men. You can see that. Uh, we had to hit them with everything we had. And there's a ball lying loose there. And I guess it's called uh, uh, down before the before the. And that's probably a, probably a pretty good call. You have to get in the end zone 24 to 10. Still OK. Now, check this out. Here's the block punt. He comes. He gets a little help from uh, one of his offensive linemen there. Kicks off him. Gets the block here. C.W. Hurst certificate, 52-yard field goal. They take it back for the touchdown. I know you're second-guessing yourself, but you look at his first field goal. It made it by 20 yards. Right. Well, if we if we make that thing, we're up 17 points with 12 minutes to go. That was a 10-point turnaround. So I guess I have to agree, agree with Lee Corso. He was on me pretty good on that. <laughs> I said, I, and we probably should have punted the football and just played it safe, but you know, you practice that. We got a good kicker. We got to make those at times. And our defense was playing pretty well, and they continue to play well. But here's a great play, great throw by Croshaw. Uh, our young corner kind of bites on the pump fake, and now there's still a whole quarter to go, and it's 24 to 24, us with no momentum whatsoever. But then the defense just continues to play, and got a lot of guys running around trying to contain their screen game. And we start we started changing momentum about this point in the game. But we had no momentum for a long time. That was a big play because they had a first down at their 42 and the momentum. Your defense stops and you come back. I thought Rice had the first down here, but they spotted him short of the first down. I was kind of perplexed on that one. He had to give up the ball again. And Dion Horenic, what a weapon this guy has been. Well, he's done a tremendous job for us in our entire special teams. As I believe we had twice that we punted the ball where they had to drive from inside their own five-yard line where they cannot open up their offense. We have a chance for a safety, and there we get him you know, scrambling around there, and he does come out of it. There's some great play by John Hall, our secondary. All, everybody converging on the ball, and you'd love to come up with that tip ball like that, but John Hall really smacks him. Dion 
pins them deep, and now we're going to get good field position here. And here's the play of the game. Okay. Dallas Davis, the first Colorado State Ram in the school's history to return two punts for touchdowns in the same game. And, Coach, tremendous blocking. You know, just every, you see everybody's there. There's, a, again, Dwayne Ruff making a play. And, uh, nothing physical on the block. Just screen it. Give Dallas a chance to take it. Get on a man and screen him out. And let Dallas do the rest of the work. And he definitely did that. And with, with the punter, the only guy left on block, uh, Dallas is going to win that one every time. That was an unbelievable return. I think the Hughes Stadium crowd, uh, nobody had left when it got that 24-24, and they were waiting for a play. And, and this is the thing that starts going right when you play hard, is, is getting the breaks like that, coach, and playing with emotion. Well, right. At this time, I was standing around before that punt. I was thinking overtime. I was wondering if we are going to win the toss or how we are going to play this thing out. But, but Dallas and the special teams uh, did a great job for us. And Utah is a good football team, and they're, they're as good as anybody in the conference. And our, our team came with great effort. Well, we've heard what Sonny's had to say on the victory. Here's what the players had to say over the big win on Utah. Still a primetime player. This is a primetime night. Here is Croshaw sacked at the one-yard line by Gallimore. Take by Croshaw. Pressured. Sacked. He'll be sacked. Oh! You, got it. Oh! Oh! you know, I'm just a, a compliment to the rest of the special teams because that, that was 11 players that, that scored those touchdowns. I was just doing what, you know, what we practiced and Coach Snyder and, you know, the rest of the special teams just did a great job. You didn't put me on TV last week. What the? Still ain't hit me yet, but I'm sure it will on the Sunny Lubick show. Throws it out there to Rice, gets a block. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Jumped on them a little early, and we wanted to do that. They have a good defense. We knew that going in, and uh, we just got to carry this momentum throughout uh, the rest of the season. We got a big game in uh, New Mexico on Saturday. First couple weeks, we had some ups and downs. You know, the team didn't really start gelling, but right now, I think we are gelling pretty good. And you know, it's been shown. We've been playing. We've been playing to the end, and we've been having victories. I think we definitely have a chance to go postseason now, and uh, that was the biggest thing coming into this game is that we knew if we lost to Utah, our chances were pretty much slim to none uh, as far as postseason is concerned. So. It was huge, the number one team in the Mountain West, and anytime you get something like that, you want to beat them and shut them down. And uh, we had our chance against BYU, and, and they got us, so we got we got our revenge against Utah. You know, we just told ourselves, you know, we need to uh, step up, make big plays. Everybody's got to come out here and be a hero, you know, and just uh, work as a team and uh, have fun out there. Let's go, y'all. Hard work pays off. You know, this is a blue-collar team, and we just had to keep pushing on, just keep rolling. And, you know, good things will happen. I'm just glad it did finally. So, uh, something to smile about. Time for a break. When we come back, we'll speak with Dion Horinic, one of the unsung heroes for the Rams this season. Back in a moment. A beautifully high wobbly kick. Davis at the 45 makes the catch. Straight ahead, 50. He's at the 40. Look out. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. Davis is going to score. Touchdown. Unbelievable play by Dallas Davis. He just drove the knife right in, took the ball at midfield, and he goes 55 yards. I cheated a little bit on that one. Instead of the defensive play of the game, I it was kind of a defensive play, a special teams play of the game, Dallas Davis. You know, you got to go with him, I think. Right. We might have to get some awards here for the special teams. I think we talk about offense, defense, but uh, we'll take it any way we can get it, whether it's a defensive play or a special teams play. It was a tremendous effort by you know, that entire unit, and of course, Dallas uh, finishing everything off. Speaking of special teams, joining us on set, Dion Horenic, the punter for the Rams. And well, you've had a tremendous year. I mean, it seems every single game we're showing highlights. And, hey, you don't necessarily see highlights of punters on coaches' football shows, but every week you're having tremendous kicks. Well, I try to, you know, I try to do the best I can because when it's my time, to, it's my time to go on the field, you know, I better do my job. You know, I try to, you know, I'm in it for the team this year. Like I said, I want, you know, I'd like the, that ring. And uh, you know, I try to put them in the worst field position they can handle or that I can put them in. Coach, what does it feel like to have a weapon like him on the sidelines? Because it doesn't matter if you're bottled way back in your territory, he can get off a 60-yarder, or he can stop it like we saw last night against Utah inside the five-yard line. Right, well, Dion, last night especially, uh, he's been so consistent for us, and we knew we had something special 
when he came on the campus here two years ago. But just take last night, for instance. I know there were two punts for sure that fell short. Uh, we, we, we covered them inside the five yard line. Well, that, that makes it very difficult for the offense to, to move the ball out of there. Here it is right there, great coverage. He just lays it right down there, gives his men a chance to get down on the two yard line. Now, everything good could happen for us from that point. Then he booms some ball. I remember last week against uh, Wyoming, we're on our own 20 yard line. Boom, the ball comes down, they catch it on their own 15. And so they got still 85 yards to go. So uh, there's so many stats that people don't realize what Dion has done for us with his foot. And here's another boomer and that ball sails in the air. It looks like here it is right there, rolling down here and just barely gets into the end zone. But that's a 65, 70 yard punt. Yeah, Dion, that was your longest career, I think, up against Wyoming, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the longest one, but also had the shortest one of the year. So <laughs> I, it's kind of a turn of events there. Hey, tell, tell the fans out there how you got to Colorado State. I know that you were a junior college for a while, went down to Texas, or is, it, is that kind of how it went? I played two years at Garden City Community College in Kansas, and then I could, you know, I picked, I chose to go to University of Texas, to play for the Longhorns, and I went down there, and the situation wasn't good. You know, I went through pretty, you know, pretty strenuous three weeks, and I just decided that you know I wasn't having fun at football anymore, so I went home. You know, I was planning on going to Fort Hay State University in Kansas, and uh, you know I'm sitting at home working on the farm. Set out a set out a semester, and all of a sudden here comes this phone call from Coach Snyder and asking me to come. And you know, to be honest with you, I really wasn't for sure what Colorado State University was, but you know, I'm glad that I'm here. Absolutely love it. As sometimes, Coach, those are the best scenarios. Things happen; they fall into your lap. And uh, really, what a weapon you've had! Uh, some scouts coming through and looking right. at Dion. Right, exactly right. It, it's. It's scenarios like that that you never know how things are going to work out. And thank God for Colorado State, our football team, and for Dion because he has blended in. The players love him. He's just a, you know, he's fun to be around. He does exactly what you want. He's kind of my quarterback. When we work with the DBs, he he, he can throw the football. I tell Brian, we better get him throwing the ball. But uh, Dion has been just a, a real integral part of this football team and, and our special teams. Every time we've won a game this year, special teams has come up big. And the kickers have done a great job, and Dion and, and his his group and the kids love to cover punts for him because he knows he's going to give him a chance to make some big plays. Dion, when you take a look at this football team, you have two losses. You lose against Fresno, you lose against uh, San Diego State, and in my opinion, teams that you could have and should have beat. But then this team rebounds, comes back. Do you think you've got it in your in your bellies now, the fire there that you've got to play with emotion every game out to try to win the rest of these three games? I think after the last two games, we really have our confidence back and we're ready to go. Yeah, you know, after the, after getting beat, people might have thought we were out of the mix, but now we win these two real important games and we're right back in it. I think people are ready to go. You know, if we run the tables, you know, we're in a good position for a postseason game. Last quick one for you, Coach. This is the size of this guy, he could almost play linebacker, couldn't he? Well, he did. I think Dion played every position in high school. He played, told me he played, I know he played quarterback because he could throw the ball in, in, in our drills. He, he throws them as well as any of our quarterbacks. I know he, he played some linebacker. He had, in fact, last year I think he got up to about 230 or so. and. <laughs> Told him to get back down. I don't know what he's weighing now. Probably right, he looks good though, at about 210, 215, and has done a, you know, again, an outstanding job for us. And hopefully we he can just get three more good good football games. And we'll start with New Mexico a week from now. Dion, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming Thanks down for, and continued luck. Thanks for being. Let me right. come. Dion Rennick. We'll we'll be back in a moment. We'll wrap up the show. We'll talk about next week's opponent, the New Mexico Lobos. They're on a bit of a roll. <laughs> Welcome back. Next week's opponent, the New Mexico Lobos. You get 10 days. Uh, usually you have a quick turnaround, but you get 10 days to prepare for them. A better football team than they've been in past years, Coach. They're in the thick of the race. Right. They've, they've played very well. Of course, we all know about their victory down in San Diego State two weeks ago. They, uh, they're they're going to be right in the thick of the race. So that's going to make them tough. They're going to be playing for something. And so we're going to have to go down there and just take it the old cliche one game at a time and our players have to realize that. Skilled players, I know that they run the option still a little bit and what do you know about New Mexico? Well I know that they got some good football players on their team. I know their quarterback, they've been shuffling quarterbacks earlier and I think they've been settled a little bit now and they're great. They got a couple good great defensive backs, linebackers and uh, they've won some football games here so we're gonna have to be, be ready and prepared to do the things that we can do 
and have a chance to win the ball game. When you play two games in six days like you just played, and then you have a 10-day break, were you really impressed upon your kids of how emotional ready they've got to be? And I think they know it. Well, that's exactly right. Coming in after this only the short, short break, that was kind of confusing. How do we treat them? How, how physical do we get? This week, we've got to take it easy. We've got to not knock things back and keep people healthy. New Mexico, uh, you're going to have them. They have you on their home field, and they're always tough down there. Um, anything in particular that you need to do? Obviously, turnovers is one thing you didn't do last night. Well, if we night. can continue to play like we have been on offense. Our offensive staff has done a great job. Coach Fairchild, quarterbacks have done an excellent job, and we have got to just continue that. Don't give the other team a chance to beat you, and we're all set. Coach, thanks for coming down again. The Rams get a big victory next week against New Mexico. Good night, everybody.